Oh, you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, and it's going to be a short one because, quite frankly, I just don't need a whole lot of time to rebut this. So the other day, there was this headline that went out because, of course, as you know, Earth Day. And Earth Day being a, a big deal, especially to the, uh, as Marco Levin likes to call him, who's also on News Radio 1440, the, the climate Nazis, the, <laughs> the ones that go around and are convinced that somehow running our air conditioners is going to cause the planet to implode in the next 10 years or something like that, to use AOC's figures at least. Well, they're at it again. And uh, this was an article based on a study done, and this was in The Hill, so go ahead and bring that up. You can see the, this latest, and there's, of course, you can go and look it up and read the article yourself, but it... it the headline pretty much says everything that it needs to say. The Arctic will have iceless summer by the year 2050, according to a new study. Now, the funny thing about this, and, and really the funny thing about all of these predictions, is they almost always, it, it's their standard operating procedure to constantly move the goalpost. It's not as though occasionally they do it or sometimes they come up with a model and they get it wrong, which, I mean, we've seen a lot of models get it wrong uh, here recently. And this actually kind of goes back to something that's going on with the virus that I was having a discussion just today with a good friend of mine. One of the things that we were talking about, and, and he's a scientist and he deals a lot with models, and, and he and I were joking around because we were talking about the different models that have been incorrect then, and neither one of us believe that this whole thing is a hoax or that the models are bad. The models have been wrong, and that's pretty much par for the course when it comes to science. When you're looking at a scientific model, even if it is done by somebody in good faith, even if they don't bring any bias to the table, and even if they really are a very competent expert in their field and know what they're talking about when making the model, the models are still always wrong. Because they're models. And the thing is, models are what you make when you don't have data. There's nothing wrong with the scientist, and, and the models are better than nothing because they give you at least some idea of the direction where something is going, but every scientific model, just about it, winds up being wrong. And so, whether you're talking about the thing with the epidemic or you're talking about with climate change now, this one, I think, obviously is politically motivated, and the scientists that brought this to the table are using projections that the data simply does not support, and so you could say that it's a bad model in that way. But you have to deal with some understanding that the model is going to be wrong because that's what makes it a model. Because you, you make a model in the absence of data. Because if you had data, there'd be no reason to make the model. Therefore, the model only exists in a vacuum of data. And so that's what's so important to understand here when you're looking at things like this, where they're putting together a study and making a model to project what they think will happen in the future, they're pretty much always wrong. And so it's important to not just look at, at where they project it's going to go, but look at how they arrived at their conclusion. Was there some kind of bias? Did they have an ax to grind when it came to this? And the reason that this model, I think, is ridiculous is because we can use history as a predictor to a great degree in this particular case, because you may remember that this is not the first time somebody has predicted the Arctic would be ice-free during the summer. This was something that has been predicted many times. In fact, you can look at it's not even a very old prediction. This is a report from the BBC that was updated last on Wednesday the 12th, December 2007. You look at the highlighted section of, of text there, and that's the last time they updated this thing. Arctic summers will be ice-free by 2013. Now, this tells us two things. First of all, again, scientific models, it's not that they're completely useless, but when it comes to climate change, they've been shown to be not only kind of useless, but pretty much entirely useless. I mean, they never turn out to be right. 
And of course, we have that advantage with hindsight, but the second thing that it tells you, and it should really be informative to us on how we observe models and projections and, and things that they're talking about for the future, because we're looking at this and understanding that they, in 2007, predicted that just six years into the future, 2013, that the Arctic was going to have an iceless summer, which of course, here we are in, in 2012, or sorry, 2020, and we're seven years past that and, and have come nowhere close to that. In fact, the Arctic actually had a record ice growth in 2015. But anyway, looking back at it, they made a project, uh, prediction that seven years later wound up not even coming close to being true. And now they're making predictions for 30 years in the future, which A, means they're even less likely to be correct because it's a prediction that is further in the future. But another thing that it should inform you on is that they're getting smarter. They're not making predictions that they'll have to answer for in the next less than a decade because that makes them look really stupid. So now what they're doing is they're trying to project it just far enough into the future to where you should panic about it right now, but not quite so far into the future that it just, you know, nobody worries about it. But they want it to be at least enough distance from where they are now when they're making the prediction to where everybody's going to forget that they predicted that by the time that the prediction actually comes because they don't want you to check their work. If they did, it would prove what you already know, that they're frauds. And that's really the issue that they come into is that they want to make these predictions and never be held accountable or never be called out for the fact that they are wildly off base. And so now what you're seeing is a lot of these projections not taking the AOC model, but instead taking a, a page out of a, a better playbook saying, well, let's make these predictions like 30 years in the future so everyone forgets that that's when we made them. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow sun of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel, you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.